FMU, you're on the air. Oh, my God, dude. Are, are you still feeling it? What's that? Are you still feeling it? Am I still feeling what? 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 The high from Friday. Is this Darren? Yes. From work? Yes. Oh, hey, man. I haven't, I haven't slept since Friday. Really? I, I mean, I know what you mean. I'm still excited. I, I guess I should tell everybody about what what uh, we're talking about. Yeah. There was uh, kind of a corporate battle of the bands thing that uh, that we were a part of. We, we Darren and I both work at a company called... Uh, Consolidated cardboard, and uh, it's kind of one of those things where different corporate, different corporations and companies field bands, and they all square off in a battle of the bands. And it was it was us over consolidated cardboard going up against uh, was it eight altogether? Yep. So it was eight different uh, eight different bands all through the uh, all through the Quinn City area. If if uh, Trying to remember, it was um, man, what was it? I know, I know, there was a band from Tribridge. Mm-hmm. There was uh, a, obviously there was us from Newbridge. Yep. Um, there was there was a uh, that ad agency in Old Bridge. That's right. Um, McKinley Severinson from Upper East West Bridge. That's right. Who, of course, were the ones we needed to take down, and we did. Yes, we. Yep. And then th- there was that. Uh, uh, Farm equipment place from Redbridge. In Redbridge, yeah, that's right. So all everybody, they all had bands, and we won first place. Yes, we did. And our band was called the Consolidated. That's right. Which is pretty exciting. It's kind of because it's like Consolidated Cardboard, the Consolidated. It's, kind of, it's kind of like the firm. That's how I. That's how I. I was thinking. Of that's it. actually what I was thinking, kind of too. Yeah. I thought it was kind of fun. I thought it was honestly. Yeah. I think it was the greatest night of my life. Really? Oh my god, it was like I was up there and it was like I was thinking why the hell did I ever doubt that I could be a rock star? You know? I know what you mean. It was kind of like being up there it was like being a rock star for one night. It was a lot of fun. I mean, did, did, did I guess just to give people a little perspective on it. It was mm-hmm. me on bass. Mm-hmm. You were doing uh you were holding it down on lead guitar and vocals. Yeah. And we had uh, Todd from work. Mm-hmm. He was doing the. He was on drums. Yep. We had Milt on keyboard. The doctor. The do- exactly. Doctor Keys. Or uh, was that what you were calling him? Yep. And then Kim was doing tambourine. Yep. Keeping the uh, the uh, keeping the scene percussive, basically. Yeah. Oh my God! Did you see when I was singing "Taking Care of Business"? And I had all those jerks from McKinley Severance and singing along on the chorus. Oh, I could have died right there, man. It's like I felt like damn Mick Jagger. You mean just having everybody being on stage and having everybody kind of controlling an audience, having uh, having them going nuts. It was like you know, there's that there's that plant thing, you know, in, in uh, I guess it was in uh, I think they had it in Almost Famous, but it's based on Robert Plant being on top of the. The riot house, and he's saying, "I'm a golden god." I felt like I was a gr- graying god, you uh-huh. know, up there. Maybe like a cardboard god. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking, why, why the hell did I go to college and waste my time with this corporate BS? You know. Really? Sort of. Weren't you? Um, no, I guess I was kind of more into the thing because it was, you know, it was a charity thing. Is kind of what got me on board. The whole the whole thing was raising money for the uh, that uh, the Quint City Music for Teens thing, which I think is a pretty good charity. So that that's kind of what got me into it. Yeah. Well, what about all those chicks from accounting who were going nuts? I mean, those were those were chicks who would never give me the time of day. But God, when I was doing Jump, uh huh, I swear I could have probably gone out there and done all of them. I mean, a- any of those things. Ugh. What? Okay. Well, you're, you, that's not, you know, I don't know. That's not the way I was thinking. Guess who I did end up uh, doing it with after the show? Who? Kim. From the band? Yeah. The, she's played. 
<laughs> she's, a, she's, oh boy, she, she is, first of all, she's really young, she's playing tambourine yeah. in our group, and you're married, and you have, like, how many kids? Two. I'm not married for long. <laughs> what do you mean you're not married for long? I'm moving in with Kim. I actually already did. Sunday. <laughs> Wait, you're moving in? That was that was like three days ago. We did this thing. Well, it's like sometimes your your destiny comes right in one moment, and everything changes. Sure, there's growing pains, but you know you gotta go, you gotta ride it. Darren, what are you talking about? Mindy and Greg will be fine. Your kids? Yeah. They'll understand that Daddy needs to do this. And what exactly does Daddy need to do? I need to be where I need to be, and I'm telling you right now, man. Trying to get people to buy cardboard boxes ain't where I need to be. So you being up there, how many songs? I can, what do we do, five songs? Four. Four. Four and the, and the jam. And the, So we do four songs. Yeah. And now four songs later, you now are a different person. I'm not different. I'm just, I'm fully realized, you know. I mean, I need to be the same place where you need to be, same place where Kim and Rick and Todd and Milt need to be. I mean, you, this is weird. I've known you at work for a long time. And it's, a, I mean, you've been up there, what, how long? Fifteen. Fifteen years. Yeah. And now you're just, you're dumping your marriage because you had one, like, one rockin' night? That's just the start of it, man. What do you mean? We're going on tour, man. I mean, you heard what that guy Ty said, didn't you? No, who's Ty? Ty, the guy that was running monitors at the, at the battle. He said we were great. He said, so he said we were who? But uh, so a monitor guy. Well, he ought to know. <laughs> Why would he know? Ty was in White Tiger. White Tiger. Yeah. That was, was like the biggest band ever from Newbridge. Oh, that's right. That was that local. They were supposed. They were huge, and then they just bottomed out. Well, from what Ty says, their manager pulled a choke job, and their publicist dropped the ball. They so, were on a major label, though. Yeah, so that was him? I didn't even notice that. Well, he had to shave his head because he went real bald. So he wants, he doesn't want to be like a, like a, like a balding guy. He wants to be a, like a rock. He would still be cool. Well, yeah, I mean, did, did you see Supergroup this weekend? I did, actually. Like Scott Ian. Scott Ian, he shaves his head. Uh huh. So does Jason Bonham. Sure, okay. But anyway, Ty, Ty says that we're we're bound for it, man. Bound for what? Well, who's we, first of all? Us, the band. The Consolidated. But yeah. We're bound for what? For glory. What do you mean? Like playing? It's now or never, man. I'm 44 and I can't let this dream slip by. And neither can you. you got to <laughs> quit your job and come live with me and Kim. And the other guys. <laughs> and they quit their jobs. They, what's that? They're going to quit their jobs, too. Who's quitting their job? Everybody. Milt is quitting his job. Yeah. And Rick and Todd and Kim. I mean, you know, Kim, Kim's kind of temp there anyway, so. Uh-huh. They're quitting. Yeah. No, the, I, I have, this is news to me. So you're quitting, too? Yeah. I, I quit today. You did? I did, yeah. And, uh, uh, for what grounds? I just, uh, I, I emailed the old man and just said, you know, my life has taken a different turn and i got to do this. i got to follow this dream. Uh, Why are you being such a downer? Is it because Kim and I are lovers? Uh, well, <laughs> this is, i got to just tell you, just got to back it up, Darren. This is so... Un incredibly uncomfortable to me. Why? Well, I mean, for starters, you're you're talking like a crazy man. No, I'm not. You were on stage 
for for how what was it 20, 20 minutes? Well, yeah, we did TCP. Uh huh. Jump. Yeah. Basket case. Yep. And we had the little jam after basket case, and then I put on my costume and my Afro wig, and we did um, the the Outcast song. Which I gotta say, I was not. That was like that was you were going off book on that one. What do you mean? I had no idea about you going and wearing an Afro wig. Oh come on! Well, you knew I was going. I had to do something after after McKinley did that thing with the cannon for the, on for those about to rock. Yeah, but you didn't have to go do something that's r- kind of racist. Well, it wasn't racist. You're doing a thing. Nobody in Outcast has an Afro. Well, sure they do, and. See, don't get me all that was not blackface, okay? It was just the stuff I put on that kind of darkened a little bit, but it wasn't even supposed to be that. I, I was, again, I was n- really not happy about that. All right, well, we'll have to work that out in the band meetings, okay? The band meetings. Yeah. So you think that the Consolidated is a re- is going to be a real band? Of course it is. Well, the, here, okay, let's, let's go down the list. You got Rick. Right. He's VP of Customer Relations. You mm. think you think he's going to quit the job? Hey, that guy, he must pull down. If I, he probably pulls down a hundred sixty grand a year. Probably more. Okay. So. Todd. Uh huh. He's married. Right. He has kids on the way. Like, was he have like a triplets or I think something? He has triplets coming, yeah. Like, is it is it two or three kids on the it's way? Three, I think. I'm yeah. pretty sure. So he's going to quit now. Yeah. And then the Milt. Right. Milt can barely even play keyboards anymore. We were we were covering up for. He's got arthritis. Well. And he's going to retire at the end of the year. In all honesty, Todd's more the one I'm worried about and why is that well he's getting a little heavy he's he getting needs to, he needs to really really lose about 30 if he wants to be up on the big stages with us uh-huh you know so that's that's oh. the one i'm worried about milk i mean you know you could give so well, i guess cortisone shots kind of take care of that stuff and so, uh, so if these guys want to be on the big stage, they should start taking cortisone shots and losing weight. Well, yeah. Well, I guess the next question is, uh, I, I would kind of say that uh, they might not want to uh, be up on the big stage. They might be happy just working. They they couldn't be. They tasted it, too. Oh, you tasted it, man. I mean, it's like, oh, my God. It's just like... You're like a god up there, you know? I mean, Rupert thinks the same thing. Rupert? Who's Rupert? Our manager. <laughs> so we have a ma- when did who? When did this band that played for 20 minutes get a manager? Friday night. I have no idea what you're talking about. You saw that guy smoking the pipe, the guy that, that was wearing the ascot at the Battle of the Bands? Okay. Kind of off to the side of the stage. I thought that guy was like some comp, was like some like bank president or something. No, no. Who he's was this, that? He's this big time manager. Rupert. Yeah. I've never heard of him. Well, he totally knows what he's doing. And he came up and he said he was blown away, and he wants to manage us. He's managed tons of huge bands over the years. Like who? Let me see. Hang on. He gave me this index card. Hang on. Remember this band called Mother 13? They had this song called Wired. It's on the radio. This must have been like, I want to say like 2003. Yeah, I do remember Mother 13. I actually just had a whole uh, thing with them on the radio. I, I, from what he said, they were huge. He also managed uh, these other bands, uh, Pout, the Gas Station Dogs, uh, Sister Sheila, Barbershop Sweat, uh, Kenny Dupree, The Gorge, White Rain, Iron's Reggae Challenge, The Hey Now, uh, Old Skull. The Hey Now, what is that? The Hey Now, um, I don't know what that is. You got me. I, you're saying these are huge bands? Yeah, Old Skull, uh, Brett Haskins, The Clash, uh, Hippie Johnny and the original Hippie Band, Punk, uh, Glass Houses, Reggie Monroe and the Survivors. That's just a few of them. 
and these are these are those are all bands that that he's worked with, and I, I guess really rocketed to the stardom. I mean, you follow the charts more than I do, so I don't really know. Uh huh. But um, I mean, things are going to be happening for Hell to Pay. For what? What's that? Hell to Pay. What is that? Oh, I forgot to tell you. That's our new band name. Hell to Pay. Yeah. It's two words. I think it's brilliant. Hell, H E L L. Sure. And the second word is to pay. Oh, you mean like the like a hair piece? Yeah. Like hell to it's pay, great, isn't it? No, yeah, that is the worst name I've ever heard. Wait, what? Yeah, it's, no, it, it's terrible. Hell to pay? Yeah. It's a. It's the worst kind of pun. I can't believe. It. Well, that's not You're the name such of the a stick in the mud. You know, Rupert says that that's a name that a lot of people are going to really, you know, get get sucked in by. It's going to look great on the billboards chart. <laughs> the billboards chart. You mean billboard? Billboards chart. What is billboards? The magazine's called Billboard. What, I, what did I say? You said on the billboards chart. Oh, I don't. Like I said, you know more about that stuff than I do, but I'm the one that's going to really do it, you know? I mean, and of course, you're going to be involved, too. But, uh, you know, Rupert said that he actually registered um, Hell to Pay back in the late 80s, and he's been saving it for just the right band, and that right band is us. So he picked that name. Yeah. He picked the name Hell to Pay. Yeah, and he said he can help us make it really big. Yeah, I'm sure, because he owns the name. Well, check this out. He's going to get us on MySpace and Friendster. And? And I paid him $6,000 to do it. Why? Oh, well, I just, I just, let, I got to let this one sink in for a second. You, how much did you pay him? 6000 To do what? To get us on MySpace, MySpace and Friendster. And w why couldn't we have done that for free like everyone else in the world? You can't do it yourself. Wait, yes, you can. How? You it's go. A it's a website. Yes, it's a website, and you go there and you sign up. You don't. You paid him six thousand dollars to to get two accounts going. Well, there's a third one too. And what's that? Well, he said he's also going to get us prominent placement on MyPlace.com. MyPlace. Yeah. What is that? That's where the big dogs run. I've never heard of my place. Well, he says not everyone gets on that site, and he can really grease the wheels for us to get in there. He greased the wheels to yeah. get us on my. <laughs> yeah. So, so he he only only six thousand bucks. Yeah. Well, well I gotta say, you, you that's that's a really unwise way to spend your money. Well, you know, Rupert says it takes a lot of money to get places in this business, and. It does say that in the in the book I just bought too, so you know that kind of backs it up. What, what kind of book did you just buy? It's this industry book. It's called How to Make It Big in the Rock Music Scene by somebody who already has. How to Make It Big in the Rock Music Scene by somebody who already has, and who who wrote that? Rupert Threadwell. Why? And who? Did, where, where did you buy the book? Rupert sold it to me. And, and man, this is so. This is so. Sh you're so delusional. Well, it's with a this. really informative pamphlet. <laughs> pamphlet? How many pages is it? Like forty-five. Like and, it's it's sort of big. And it's how? Than, right? It's like a mega pamphlet. <laughs> how much did this mega pamphlet set you back? Sixty-five dollars. Sixty-five bucks. So yeah. you've paid. Now you make me feel like a dummy. Well, I don't understand what you're what you're uh, what you're doing here. You're you're spending this good money for things that just sound just insane. Not insane. I mean, you know, it isn't in, in, insane. What that we're not doing originals like Rupert says we should be. So now we got to write songs. I, I well. Well, we. I'm not even in this. Yes, you are. Strap in, okay? Because I've already written. I've already written. Four since Friday. It's so easy. 
Writing songs is easy. Hell yes, it is. So you've written four songs since since Friday after yeah. you got this bolt of of uh, of rock rock inspiration. Yeah, I, I called Rupert uh, today and I ran this new song by him and he flipped. He said it's going going to totally just hit the top of the billboards. And what 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 is this new song? Well, it's about Kim. Uh huh. And it's called Little Lover Girl. I, I, I don't have the mother axe on me, but but I, I, I can just kind of sing what I got. Okay, I'd love to hear some of this. It's, it's, it's kind of like a ballady sort of thing, but it, it it'll get heavy at some point. Okay, that's where you really kind of kick in your fuzz pedals. My ba- my fuzz pedals yeah, for my yeah. bass. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Let's. I would. What is this called? Little Lover Girl. It, 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 it's something like that. Something like that. People will say a love. Is never gonna last. But when I lay you down on my big oak bed, I know it's gonna be forever. There's no other lover for you, my little lover girl. Then it kind of kicks in a little bit after that. But I, I think it's great. And Rupert said it's it's chart bound. Yeah, I'm sure he did. What was your favorite part of it? <laughs> um, I can tell you my least favorite part. Well, it can't be the big oak bed. Well, yes, it was. That was my absolute least favorite part. Although, I don't like any of it, really. Why? Why? <laughs> because well, how about it... this? How about this? I got another one. Rupert said that we got to be topical, too. Uh-huh. So, here's one. And check this out. Okay, it, it's going to be heavier. Okay, it's going. To, it's going to be like think, um, think scarecrowish kind of kind of a, a vibe to it. You know, what's what do you mean scarecrow? JCM. Ugh, I'm more repulsed by the fact that I figured out what that is. John Cougar Mellencamp. Yeah, of course. So it's going to have a heavier feel, like a like a scarecrow feel. Sure. Yes. I mean, think think about uh, that big bald drummer rocking this. Kenny Aronoff. I don't know. Okay, I'm thinking about him rocking this. Okay. What song off Scarecrow does it sound like, maybe? Well, probably like, uh, what's the one that goes, uh, they come from the something and they come from the something. R-O-C? That's boom, bang. Oh, yeah, R-O-C-K in the USA. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, he's our president, and we should respect the man, the Jewish liberals. You got your head in the sand. It'll take some time to make our act strong. You think you're so smart, but you got it all wrong. And it kicks in big drum roll. Stand tall and fight for freedom. Stand tall and fight for truth. Something like that. Oh, I love. I... Now, hey, guess what the the uh, my least favorite part of that one was. Couldn't even guess. I don't know. Um, what was that line you said? There's something about Jewish liberals. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what is that? What do you mean? I, oh, it's pretty much. Uh, so, so you're really covering all the bases. You got a nice, nice uh, racist thing going there on Friday night with the Afro. And then now you're kind of now you got a nice little anti-Semitic. Uh, uh, v- vibe going there with uh, the uh, the thing about Jewish liberals. Well, there's this other song too, Blue Sugar. Blue Sugar. Yeah. What is Blue Sugar? Uh, you know, it's not really about anything in particular. Uh huh. But it's like. Uh, no, this is one of the ones you wrote yeah, in that. It's, it's an original. Yeah. Uh-huh. Why? Because it sounds like a really stupid title. It sounds like Brown Sugar. <laughs> Shut up. Is it like brown sugar? I, I don't think so. I mean, I like I said, I don't have the the axe here on me, but, but the riff is like bam 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 ba do bam 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 ba do do. Yeah, that's pretty much brown sugar. All right, well, scratch that one. I, so I, I wrote three. Okay. You wrote three. You wrote three awful songs. No, well, you haven't even heard about the, the other one yet. 
Okay, you're right. I only I only know for a fact that two of them are are, are awful. Well, the other one is is kind of a it's it's a sort of tough tougher one. It's kind of like a it's it's totally vibey. Mm-hmm. And uh, basically, to cut a long story short, uh, Kim took me skiing after the battle on Friday, mm-hmm. and I really loved it. So where? So you're not even in town now? No, I'm in town. Well, how how did you go skiing? Oh, not 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 that kind of skiing. Oh, come on! What? I'm an adult. So you're talking about doing coke? Oh, come on, man! Is so? that what you're is that what you're talking about? I don't know, man. Don't get me in trouble. Well. Wait. Anyway, I really liked it, and, and I bought a whole bunch of the stuff the next day. Uh huh. And now I can't get enough of it. Yeah, that's called being an addict. No, it's not. Yeah, no, no, it's not. Well, I'm already in touch with Werner. Werner. Yeah. Oh, who is Werner? Remember that German guy in the trench coat who um, hung out at the loading dock at work. The one who got fired, well, he worked there for a little stretch. He did a little bit, yeah. He was kind of like in the cafeteria, but then he started hanging out until old man Dalrymple fired that hose at him. I do, yes. That guy was, he looked like, um... Like Rutger Hauer. Yeah, but but he had that, uh... Like well, 5'2". Yeah, he was definitely shorter than Rutger Hauer. And he also had that, uh... Black mustache. Yeah. And the and the blonde hair, yeah. That's that's Werner, my so, snowman. So hey, oh, so you, you uh, uh, it's clear if I can figure this out. You you started doing uh, coke with Kim, right? Who I can also mention is the daughter of of Cyrus, Kim Kim Dalrymple. Yes, of our boss, Cyrus Dalrymple. That's so you're with the you this is this is the uh the journey of your stupidity. What? You play a concert. I thought we were buddies. Well, I I'm going to try to talk to you straight. Maybe this will get through your head. Talk you, on. You go and you we play a, a show that's a benefit for kids as to for music programs. We play four songs. And the jam. And the and the jam. You're right. Okay. Four songs in one jam. So we play that. You now, in that time, have transformed yourself. You now have left your family. You have hooked up with a manager who seems to be bleeding you dry. You so keep going. You are with a, uh, the 22-year-old... Daughter of our boss, having an affair as a married man, living with her, and she has got you hooked on coke, and you now are in trouble with some guy who's a total dirtbag, Werner, this guy who got fired for I don't know what. He couldn't have worked there longer than a week. He was, um, did you ever hear what he did? Or what he was accused of doing? I have no idea. Well, he was accused of, um, well, he worked in the cafeteria, but he would kind of make his way into the shipping room, and he would slip little little baggies into boxes and have them diverted. So he was just pretty much using our cardboard company to deliver drugs. Well, that's how you, that's how you say it. He says that he was just sort of, you know, trying to raise America's spirits. And I gotta say, from what I've experienced, he does do that. He raises America's spirits. Well, mine at least, except for the fact that I can't pay him what I owe him. And how much do you owe him? I'd rather not say. Uh, ballpark. Thirty-two thousand. Okay, that's a little more than ballparking well, it, and that's a lot of money. Well, I told him I'd write a song about him. And I guaranteed him that it would be a smash hit, and I gave him this rough demo of it earlier today. Uh huh. And he said if he liked it, he wouldn't smash my face. Because of the money. Yeah. So, 
So uh, is he going to smash your face? Well, I haven't heard from him yet, but um, the song doesn't have the total melody nailed down yet, but it's it's something like, uh, some call him a hero, some call him a saint. He's a healer with a bag of magic. Here he is, the man who makes the snow come. Basically, the chorus. Here, so that's I can. Uh, that sounds kind of familiar. I don't think. Is that rock you like a original. hurricane? That's rock you like a hurricane. No, it isn't. It should. Oh. No, that definitely is rock. No, it like. isn't. Here he oh. is. You're so jealous of me. I'm really not jealous. You're of jealous. You. I can. I guarantee you, I'm not jealous of you. Uh, I, I couldn't be further away from jealousy right now. Hmm. Well. So you rip off Rock You Like a Hurricane and give it to this guy. No, I didn't. Well, I guess... Uh, you're going to be so regretting how you're treating me once it's rolling. Now, give me, give me an example, if you don't mind, of how it's going to be when it's rolling. Okay, well, in a, in a nutshell... Uh-huh. Okay, first, uh, we all move in together. That way we totally bond uh, as... Music bros and sisters. So the yes. whole, so the band would be me, you, mm -hmm. uh, well, Rick, Kim, Kim, of course. Kim, well, of course, Rick, Todd, and Milt. Yeah, all living in a where? In the house we're renting. Oh, okay, so Down right by Newbridge uh, College. All right, so right now you're or you're already off into fantasy land. What do you mean? Living in a house together, so we Rick. can bond. We're going to drink beers, we're going to play tunes, go joyriding, you know, make love. I mean, Kim and I will be doing that. I don't know about you guys. But, uh -huh. but I mean, you could. this could be your your uh, your key to getting out of what you got going on. I don't want this. This was done as a goof for me. Okay, so, that, so we're all living in a... We can't all be brave. Yeah, I guess you're right. We can't all be brave. So we're in a house together now. Mm -hmm. I just want to. I'm just going to take this fantasy as far as as you can can see it. Your fantasy, my reality. Okay, so we're all in this house together. What are we? Are we? Are we writing songs and oh, recording? Yeah. And, and after a week of writing and rehearsing, we go to New York City mm -hmm. and we play what's called a showcase show at CBGB's. And by that point, Rupert has already secured uh, Clive Davis's interest. Uh -huh. And he's got a front row seat uh, table for Clive, and Clive, of course, is blown away by us. All right, there's about uh, 15 things wrong with what you just said. So we're playing a show, uh, and within one week, mm -hmm. we're playing a showcase yeah. for a major label head, yeah. one of the most powerful men in the music industry, at a club that is pretty much on its last legs. No, it's not. Have you seen the book? What book? Uh, that CBGB's book that came out like about six months ago or so. Yeah, all, all the the it's the totally legendary the picture book. Yeah, yeah I did, it's got I, pictures in it. Yeah, I did see that book, and I, I, my favorite part about it is it is how it stops uh, how it, how how it stops having anybody even vaguely relevant uh, playing the club after like 1991. So you don't think Mel and the Meltones were anything? Because that's the last band in the picture. Yeah, uh, not, in, not in the really. Not, a, not. I would say that that's not a... They are not uh, that relevant. Well, says you. Uh-huh. Okay, what else was wrong with that little scenario there? You don't think Clive Davis will come see us? I don't think he's going to come to CBGB's and check us out, no. Well, for, for your info, Rupert's grandson lives near where Clive Davis has a summer home in Nantucket. Uh huh. And his grandson can pretty much just bop by, and put a CD in Clive's mailbox, and that's all it's going to take. Uh, but th again, that's science fiction you're you're pushing right there. <sighs> well, next step after that, mm -hmm. we check into the Four Seasons, and we sign our contract. Okay, and how much money are we getting for this contract? Rupert says we could probably, as a new artist, is a little less, but because we're so good. It'll probably be at least six million dollars. <laughs> what? Six, six million. So we're going to sign a contract for six million dollars. One for me, 
one for you. Uh huh. Maybe one for Todd, depending on the weight stuff. Uh huh. Uh, one for Milt and one for uh, Kim, and one for Rupert. Really? So, yeah. so we're gonna we're gonna get six and. and but you know how it works with that money. How is that like a how many album deal? I don't know. Probably as many as we want. Thirty? I don't know. <laughs> so that's a thirty album deal. I don't know. I leave that to Rupert. But he said we could probably write our own ticket. And he also said that we could probably get you know the, any producer that we wanted, maybe like Robbie Robinson or Dr. Dre. Who, wait, who's that first one? Robbie Robinson from the band. I thought you were into rock music. You mean Robbie Robertson? Who's that? He's the guy from the band. I don't think so. Um, I do think so. Okay, well. I'll... And Dr. Dre, not Dre. The rap guy. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Dre. Well, he, I think we could do some good stuff with him, too. So we go into the studio, uh -huh. and we do our album. Uh huh. And then the album comes out like a month later. Okay. And we promote it by going on Leno and Conan and Regis and Kelly and all those shows. SNL, of course, can't forget them. Oh, of course we can't forget them. So, so we just get on all those shows magically. What do you mean? No, you you, you have you, to ask them, and then what, when they hear your CD, they let you on. Yeah, that's exactly how it works. They don't look at uh. At your place in the industry. Yeah, the top of the, of the Billboard's chart. That's our place. Oh, so we're just going to the top of the Billboard's yeah. chart. I, I, Bill, yeah, I mean, now saying Billboard's. Excuse me? It's Billboard. Okay, well, I'll, I'll say it your way if that makes you happy. And then we do six or seven shows of our own in theaters, kind of as a warm-up for our big tour with someone like Springsteen, uh -huh. opening, opening or co-headlining. <laughs> right, back up a second there. Uh -huh. What are we doing? We have some warm-up shows yeah. of our own, like our own headlining shows in theaters yeah. to warm up for our big tour where we open up for a bigger artist like Bruce Springsteen. So it's us opening for... Well, Bruce Springsteen kind of doesn't have opening acts. Well, he will once he hears our CD. Oh, so he's just going to change the way he's conducted his entire his entire uh, touring regiment for... Well, we're that good. And Rupert says by, by the middle of the tour, Bruce will want to switch with us. Uh, and do what? Open for us. Oh, okay. So, uh, wow, you really are taking anything that Rupert says to heart. Sure, I imagine it'll take a few months for the album to go gold, but, you know, when it does... Uh-huh. When it does what? Well, by that point, we're just kicking back in the Bahamas until it's time to do it all again. That, this is the saddest, most delu delusional thing I've ever heard. See, that's that's why... that's. I hate to say this, my buddy, but that's why you might not be a part of this. You don't have the attitude. I've got the attitude now, you know, and it took, uh -huh. it took uh, Kim showing me that I could do it. Oh, and by the way, yeah. um, Kim says I should get my you-know-what pierced. Oh, I can't even talk about that. And I'm really oh, thinking of do, doing do, it. Do, 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 do. It's supposed to relieve me. I don't even want to talk about that on the air. Well, your shockies get kind of... What is a shocky? Well, Kim's mother is a new age healer. Uh-huh. And she says that your body has all these shockies. Shockies. Chakra? Excuse me? Chakras? What's that? I think those are zones of... of I, I don't, I'm not like even... energy. Yeah, exactly. There's, I think they're shockies. I think it's chakra. Well, sometimes you got to blow out your shocky, basically, and that way, you if you do that, you can experience. I just, I just. Uh, okay. I just bleeped you. I'm sorry. Okay, well, I'm sorry. Keep it, keep it clean, Darren. Hey, um, Tom. Yeah. I need a little favor from you. Uh huh. This, uh, well, what is it? Well, just say you'll do it first. No, I'm definitely not saying I'm. I'm... Come on, man! We've been through so much. What is the favor? I need you to go into my house and take some stuff out while um, while Helen's at work. Well, your wife. Yeah. Is at work. Why? Well, if I know Helen, she's going to really fight for custody of the kids. Mm-hmm. I think she'll be a total biatch. Okay. 
and I got some stuff in the basement that could really look bad if it's brought out in court. Okay, what kind of stuff is that? Well, number one, you know, of course, there's the spank fault. <laughs> okay, okay. All my, my mags and fists. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Hey, don't judge. I'm not judging. I'm not just... like I'm the only guy addicted to this stuff. You're... Oof. What else? Well, you'll need to bring uh, Todd and Rick along because the vault weighs a ton, and you'll probably need a like a winch. <laughs> yeah. Okay. To, to kind of bring it up, you uh -huh. know, like a big rope, or I don't know. You'll have to figure it out, but it's going to be a, a biatch. Uh, secondly, I've got about thirty paintings down there that I've done over the years of me and the cast from Mash. In very erotic situations. Oh. Don't judge. <laughs> oh, I got to judge on this one. Well, it would be bad news if this stuff was made public. These are paintings? Yeah. Like, how big? You know, like, I don't know, probably four foot by five foot. And how many of them are there? There's 30 of them. 30 of them? The one you got to really make sure you get is the one of me and Colonel Flagg doing that stuff to uh, uh, the Coast uh, after his plane went down in the Sea of Japan. God. Uh, also, the underwear bag. I've saved every pair of underwear I ever owned since I was a kid. That's weird. Stop judging, please. Ah, you're so creepy. I also need you to grab Greg. Greg? My son. Wait, you want me to take all this stuff, which is bad enough, and then your son? Yeah. Why am I taking your son? Well, H Helen can have Mindy. You know, a little girl needs her mom, but a little boy needs his dad. Just give him some peanut shoes or something, and he'll 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 get in the car. Oh, I'm not abducting your but, son. Then you drop him off at, at our place. No, I'm not doing any of this. Come on. No way. What is finished? I just finished up your email. You just wrote me an email? No, I wrote an email from you to Old Man Dalrymple. You wrote an email from me? Yeah. How? I got into your, um, your account. Which account? My work account? Yeah. Vince down at IT showed me how to do it. Why? Well, that's that's none of your business. Well, one of the perks, I guess. One of the perks of what? Of just, you know, being a higher up. You're not that high up. Well. So what did you just write? Well, I told uh, old man Dalrymple that uh, you're leaving consolidated. I, I wrote emails for all three of you guys. For who? For, for the, the other guys in the band. So you quit for us? Yeah. But those are those other guys doing this? Pretty much so. They sort of said that they... I mean, they said they were so, excited so, about it after the show. What did they say? Well, after the show, I said, man, wasn't that great? Uh-huh. And, um, you know, Rick was totally into it. Totally into the thing. What did he say? He said, he said yeah, man, it was great. Yeah, it was great playing for one, for one uh, four-song set. And then, and, and then with Todd, I said, oh, my God, I can't wait to do this again. Yeah. And what did he say? He said, um, I don't know, I think he said, uh, he said, yeah, maybe. Yeah, may yeah, maybe is not him wanting to quit his job and go join your rock group. Well, I'm just a step ahead of you guys. I know I got the, the full-on taste, and once you guys get it, you're going to be so glad that I, I quit your jobs for you. That's none of you. Well, I just had, now I have to scramble and no. get my job back. What well, the emails you, were pretty standard. Well, what did you write in it? Well, for those guys, I just said, you know, uh, just wanted to try something different, uh, you know, with our lives. And we're at that period where we need to try different things or we're going to regret it forever. But, uh, but yours was, like, very, uh, what's the word, cathartic. Uh-huh. Catharctic? Yeah, yeah. Say that word again. 
uh, cathartic? Is, is it cathartic? Yeah, no, you got it, you got it. Okay. Um, I, I basically, I told him, a, as you, of course, yes. that uh, you're sick of toiling away under his iron-fisted rulership and that he was the worst boss you could ever imagine working for. Uh, I also worked in that you think he looks like Ernest Borgnine, but with a fatter face and hairier ears. So you uh, you insulted him. Oh. I need to still be in good with him. Oh. If I need dough down the line, you know. Oh boy. I, I now I got to try to get my job back. Well, oh boy is right. Oh no. Oh jeez. Why why are you? You you're you're just crazy. I I no. want nothing to do with this. What? I'm looking out the window right now. Yeah. And I can see Werner coming up the driveway. He's carrying the straight razor. I, oh. I can see it glistening in the moonlight. Oh, my God. He must not have liked the song. Tom, I lied. Uh huh. I did steal that melody from Rocky like a hurricane. Oh, man. I got to run. <laughs> Think of that song. Ow! You didn't. You didn't like it. Ow! I can explain. I know that I. It, it seems like it was sort of a. Pro Ow! From that song by the. Ow! Ah! Ah! My God. I think Werner was killing him. He had a straight razor. Holy moly. That was creepy. Man. Weird thing. A lot of people now doing coke, apparently. A lot of people getting killed also. So all the people from the the Mother Thirteen and that postmaster guy, those mailmen, I think hacked them up. And now, now Darren, that you're going to hear stories about the Portland Trailblazers. And the guy who made the food for their flights. FMU, you're on the air. Oh, 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 oh. Who's this? Oh. Is this Trent? Uh, Trent? No. Darren? Yes. Oh, boy, oh. what happened? You all right? He slashed me. Werner slashed you. Oh, hang in there, buddy. Oh. Are you going to the hospital now? No, I'll probably... I can probably stitch it up with masking tape. How many times did he stab you? I don't know. Rough estimate. Um, 31. You better go to the hospital. No, they're not that deep. I'll be at practice on Friday, okay? We'll have to cancel Thursday. Oh, please go get taken care of. Oh. Oh, and you'll appreciate this. Yeah. I was able to make it back in the house. Yeah. Those emails all went through. Oh, 
Great. Thank you. Oh, um, thank you for so, getting me fired. So that's settled. So you got plenty of time now. Oh, Ugh, no, now I've got to work and get my job back. Oh, you can't. I can. Hold on. Oh, I just had a little blackout. Kind of interesting. Go get some treatment. No, just stick with the tape, probably. But I'll see you on Friday, okay? I'll call, I'll call Rupert. Maybe he can help me. Okay. Oh, and there he goes.